It's the guy who bought a Ford and didn't think anything was going to go wrong. Oh yeah, that's me. You played yourself. And I bet you're here to see an intake manifold get replaced. Unfortunately, that is what's happening today. But hey, what's up guys? So as you just saw from that short little montage, we are replacing the intake manifold on this 2017 F-150 here. And I don't know about you guys, but I did not want to do this. It's not because it's hard, but it's just like, I wanted this as a daily to you know get me around and not mess up, but that was a mistake <laughs> on my part. <laughs> But nah, I'm just kidding guys. Basically, I, what I found from research is I have a code P2007 or maybe even a P2004. Basically, there's these little intake runners and they go down the entire intake and there's essentially like a little valve. I can show you with the new intake, but there's a valve that these things open and close. Pretty much, I think they keep them closed whenever you're trying to get low end torque on these coyotes and then it's almost like a weird VTEC. Then whenever you're in high RPMs, they actually opened a lot more air to come in. I guess it's like Ford's version of like VTEC. I don't know. Maybe just the Coyotes don't have a lot of low end torque, so they have to do something to get that. So basically when I was going to Virginia for Hyperfest, actually, I got this code. I don't know what happened or how it happened, but I got the code, the check engine light came on and I immediately looked it up because the Ford app actually told me what was going on. Uh, it didn't tell me a code, but it told me like you might have your, your intake manifold runners stuck open. And I was like, uh, okay, I don't know if this is. Looked it up, found out I can drive it home. Uh, I've actually been driving it for like the past month or so now with this issue. And I've looked it up, it says it's not advised, but you can still drive on it. But I finally came around to getting new, the new part here. Uh, the whole intake manifold, I've just honestly been dreading this installation. <laughs> but we're gonna do it today and knock it out so I can get rid of this check engine light. Uh, and actually the Ford has been like dragging. Like we're talking like, just bare minimum performance here. And it's been kind of annoying. So I wanna get this back up and running and have the Coyote V8 5 goodness that we've been, we've had this whole time. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. I haven't found any other videos that really show you in depth of what to do here. They just kind of show you maybe like swapping intakes, but we'll do the whole thing. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and get this hood open. We're gonna go into that fuse box. All right, now that you got your hood open, go ahead and get back here to the fuse box. All right, y'all. Now, once you've cracked open your fuse box here, you're gonna go get your owner's manual here and you're gonna check where your fuses are. My starts is 309, but I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna look for the one that says the fuel pump. And I believe it's number nine here. It's a 30 amp fuse. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find number nine. Once we disconnect that, we're gonna go start the truck, let it run out of gas and just stop on its own. And all we're trying to accomplish is the fuel rails here, which is actually underneath this padding. We wanna get all the pressure out of it. So this way, whenever we do disconnect it, because we have to disconnect two fuel lines that it's not gonna be squirting out everywhere and making a huge giant mess. If you come over here, there's another fuel pump, a fuse on 56 and 56 is just a couple up. So it's a 20 amp. So it's gonna be this guy right here. So I'm gonna pull this one, go start the truck and then let it stall. truck didn't even want to start it's just to stall so i'm assuming with those few pumps i just did there that all the fuel that was back there has now made its way up here so hopefully all the fuel pressure is out if not we'll find out <laughs> now we're going to begin to go ahead and take our air filter out all you gotta do is come get this little connector here all you do is you just push on this top one all right got that one off then you need to get this one as well there's a little lever down here you just pull it and this one also comes off. So see a little lever right there. You just pull him over. That comes off. Then also you just take off these couple little clamps. One there and one at the throttle body. And then this piece will come out. And you also notice that there's actually no uh, mass airflow sensor. The four trucks are like map. It's like something, something pressure. Uh, they don't run off of like air coming in. They have like some map sensor way in the back of the intake. So we'll get to that here in a second. But yeah, there's no mass airflow you have to take out here. Once you've taken your air intake tube out. Now you're gonna go ahead and get these few connections here at the top. So you're gonna have this sensor right here, kind of the same as before. Twist this little guy, pull him off. That one's good to go out of the way. You're gonna have right here, you're gonna crimp that and then get this one out of here too. But then this one's a little difficult. This one right here at the front, it's got these little green tabs on it. I'm gonna put you sideways so you can see them. You see right here, this little tab, you're just gonna push these little tabs in on both sides. And then this piece should come off a little bit. You don't take it all the way off, but you just pop it up enough where you can get this piece off. 
And then once you got all those out, then you can go ahead and prop them up on the top. But I'll show you here in just a second. All right, now you got those disconnected. So this guy over here, I went ahead and just turned him around. He won't be in the way of getting the manifold out. Same, same over here, this guy, just turn him out the way. And I'm gonna take these few right here that I just disconnected and I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie them up out of the way. Just way they're not, you know, getting all up in here when I'm trying to get this manifold out and, you know, just being like a hassle on you and whatever. So, and then we'll continue on with the sensors in the back. All right, so I went ahead, pulled them back and took about four zip ties, put them together, got them to the windshield wiper there. So those guys are out of the way. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our fuel lines here. So I'll go ahead and remove these covers. If you have a platinum or a limited, I guess they, they give you these covers here, but remove these little foam covers. And then this is actually one of your fuel line disconnects. It's a quick disconnect. You can just pop it out. And before y'all freak out, because I know some of you are about to be like, you're pulling fuel lines? Is the battery disconnected? Not yet. I'm doing it right now. And all we have is this quick disconnect one right there. And it's the same tab just as that green one was right here. You just pull up on it just like this. Oh. Now we can just disconnect this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some rag down. And you'll see here, we'll just pull this off. Here comes the fuel leaking out on a rag. It's underneath there, but you can see it leaking out. So here we are. Get the rest of that fuel out of there. I'm gonna put this little connector piece back on here where it goes. There we go. Boom. Now we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting the fuel rail. And you'll see these 10 mils right here. There's one back there. You see him right there? There's two, three, and four. They're pretty long. They're like, they're about like yay big. But you're gonna go ahead and get those guys out. Before you do that though, disconnect your, disconnect these plugs here on each side. You can see them, they go all the way back. One for each cylinder here. Since it is one unit, and it doesn't have any additional fuel rails coming in. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off with the manifold itself because it's just really hard to get off. I don't wanna damage anything. It's aluminum, I don't wanna bend it. They're just a little in the way of those manifold bolts right there, right there. So that's no biggie, it's all good. There's three manifold bolts on each side, two in the front, middle, and then in the back. So get your little swivel, small extension, and then you could easily get those out. Those are also a 10 millimeter. We've got all six of the manifold bolts taken out. And like I said, and now you can see that my manifold is in fact loose. We have this coolant hose here. So we have to go ahead and take this throttle body off. And it's just these four bolts here. So we're gonna go ahead and pop him off, uh, disconnect some of these sensors here. One being right here, which I can probably go ahead and do now. And then this one with this little red clip here, we're gonna go ahead and just get this one out. Probably have to push it back and then this will come off. And then uh, once we get these bolts off, then this throttle body should come out and that'll give us room to go ahead and lift the whole manifold out. All right, so we got those two connectors off and the throttle body. So now we're gonna go ahead and start to lift the manifold, but in the back, you're gonna see a bunch of connector pieces back there. And all of that is where the IMRC is stuff, the map sensor, all that is back there, which is really hard to get off. The connector pieces are kind of awful from them heard. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an attack. I heard the best theory is to lift this piece up and over the manifold, lift it over, and then the best you can reach back there and get all those connectors off. But I'll show you here once I do it. Alrighty y'all, I'm not even gonna lie to you. It took me about three hours to get this thing out here. Oh, uh, that is absolutely awful. But if we look here, these are the connections I was talking about. So this one's pretty easy, it's just on top. You got this small one right here behind it. So those are pretty easy to get. This one's a little difficult. You have a little red center pin. You have to push in with like a little tiny screwdriver and then you hold down the lever and pull it down. Also had, I guess it's a vacuum line back here. You have to pr pretty much pinch the little disconnecting thing or the, the clamper. Pinch this one hard and pulled as hard as I could. You have another small little sensor here. Pretty easy to get off, not too bad. But holy crap, this one sucked. And I recommend actually taking this manifold and rotating it as much as you can to the right. I laid down up here, leaned on my battery, put my hands back here, got a tiny little screwdriver, pushed down a little lever on the uh, clamp itself and took the screwdriver, pushed off the connector because it was just on there. Actually, I actually taped up some of the uh, holes there. I don't want any dust falling in because there's actually a good amount of dust just sitting around, which is kind of concerning. But so that's all off here. Still got our fuel rails on and whatever. I actually want to show you kind of something crazy. Check this out. I guess this goes to show the importance of catch cans because look at this. Look how much oil is in this thing, dude. 
Look at all the oil that's coming out of that. That's going right back into your cylinders. So I guess it's for real serious about getting those catch cans so you're rid of that stuff right there. But that's, yeah, that's pretty bad, man. Here is our new intake manifold. This one is by Dorman. I got it off of uh, rockauto.com. I'll post a link in the description for you, but they claim to have fixed the IMRC runner issue, uh, which is pretty much these guys right here. They've claimed to fix them because I'm assuming that these little rods that run all the way down the intake will snap or the little flaps in here will get stuck open, whatever the case may be. Maybe like even this piece starts to snap off from the welds. They say it's just poor design from the factory. Well, I mean, I kind of believe them. So they've claimed to have made an intake that won't have any more IMRC issues. Yeah, they have all the connections here. Uh, it's new intake. They give you new gaskets and everything. You have all the self tapping screws. You have all the bunch of gaskets here and you'll see they give you everything. And then you actually have to install some of the stuff, all this stuff from the old intake onto the new one here. So all this stuff right here has to pretty much get added, which is fine. It's easy to just take off with some torch bits, which I'll tell you here soon. But yeah, once we transfer all this, put our O-rings in, get our self tapping screws, whatever, this will be good to go back into the truck. So let's go ahead and jump on that. We're gonna get all these T20 torch bits here off. You have a bunch of them here. I'm trying to point at them as best I can, but just look for any of these torx bits. You wanna go ahead and grab these guys, take them off. Like I said, all these are T20, except this guy who's a T30. I want it to be known, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, that's why I'm doing it so you can learn from me even if I mess this up. <laughs> So I finally got this piece off of this runner right here. And check this out, look, that's that's the runner that broke. Cause you can see this one, a little peg versus nothing. So it completely broke off. And this is what Dorman claims to be, had fixed is they may fix the welds or whatever. And they have stronger IMRCs. And these pretty much control these flaps in here. But all I did really was I got like a little pry tool and I kind of stuck it in between. All I really did, you can see in here, there's the other ball right there. And all I did was kind of get the pry tool, move this piece around, stick it in there and then pry it out. And I'm trying to be gentle because these have to go back onto the new one. You don't really want to beat up this housing right here. Just be careful trying to get this one off, pull it off really gentle. Once you got everything off, you're good to put it on the new one. Also, if you've been struggling like me for the past 20 minutes to get these fuel rails out, I've tried pulling on them uh, just with my hands that nothing can really do it. I've tried prying them out down here, but can't really get a grip on my little attachment here. But what just worked on the other side is I stuck this in between, in between that little, in between this piece and this piece right here. Stuck it in between and pushed down and it popped these two up and then I did it again over here. And that seemed to work, it didn't damage it. I know it's aluminum, so I'm trying to be careful with it. All right, now that you got your fuel rolls off, see these O-rings right here? They're pretty crusty and dirty. So Dorman actually gave you some new ones. So make sure you put those on because you need those for this new intake. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those now. Alrighty, so we're almost done here putting everything back from the original to the new. A little tip that I did to get these little, this little attachment that goes to the ball that then connects to the IMRC. So for this side right here, all I did was I took the back end of this little driver here. I took my hammer, I backed this up just like that obviously didn't have a, a bit in it. And I just barely tapped it on there just to make sure it's it's fully seated. Cause I'm, I'm trying to squeeze this thing and it's just not, it's not doing it for me. So being very gentle there. You can actually see the broken off piece here. We'll pull that out. Yep, this is uh, what caused my check engine light. Is this guy right here. All right y'all, so we got all of our screws and everything back in. Make sure you're plugging in this little sensor here into that IMRC little pin. Same, same over here, but we've got everything connected. Make sure everything is lined up in its proper holes. Uh, everything is torqued down to two foot pounds and this one is four foot pounds. Um, I don't have a torque wrench that small, so I just kind of gave it a little boop and called it done. It'll tell you, don't over torque them. I get it, uh, but I don't have a torque wrench, so I'm just kind of 
go on but everything should be done now we're gonna go ahead and install the fuel rope back in so we'll go ahead and sit this thing back on here and then we should be good to go ahead and reinstall now we got to go ahead and take off these few bolts here switch this piece over to this guy here and once you get these out i've already popped them out but pop this one and this one out right here and these are the two o-rings Dorman gives you right there that the big one here for e this is the pcv outlet o o-ring and then this guy the smaller one is the evap solenoid valve o-ring all right before we put these new fuel rails back in got all the new o-rings and everything and such so i found out a way to make it a little bit easier i'm just going to get some silicone grease apply it to every one of these little o-rings around these fuel injectors and then that should make it a little bit easier to get all these in because you get to put a good amount of pressure on these things to push them back down oh yeah i highly recommend that silicone grease because these things just slid in like absolute butter so no hard pushing down no risking uh, bending these rails or anything but a little bit of silicone grease they're all seated and good to go so now it's pretty much just uh put it back in time so we're gonna go ahead and begin to get all these connectors back on just as you saw we took off all back there all those guys put them back on and then hopefully this will be a lot easier to reinstall and everything. So go ahead and just do it in reverse order. I'm not going to record or anything. And then I'll catch up with you when I'm going to go ahead and start the truck back up. All right, you guys, we have finally put everything back together on the F-150. Everything connected, the brand new intake manifold in. We got all our hoses connected, everything with the intake throttle bodies back in. Make sure whenever you do start bolting down your intake manifold, go in like a cross pattern. So you got three bolts on each side. So front, back, and then I went to front, back, and then middle, middle. Same thing with the fuel line, since you have those two bolts here, just did one, two, three, and four, and then just keep going. Same, same throttle body, one, two, three, four, however you want to do it, but make sure you go across so this way you have equal pressure whenever you're putting it back down. I'm about to reconnect the battery here. I already put the fuse back in for the fuel pump. And then once I make sure everything is good and it doesn't blow up on me, I'm gonna go show you how to do the relearn process for your throttle body. All right, we just started the truck back up for the first time. You can see that the idle is kind of surging a little bit, but that's fine. It's relearning right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it do this for a little bit. I don't know why it's doing that to them, but it is. Alrighty, y'all. It has officially been about three weeks since you've seen that last part just now. Basically, I'll tell you what happened. So, essentially, with the intake manifold, it is prone that when those runners go bad, so do the actuators. I didn't know that. Uh, it took me having to go through four to do a thousand dollar pretty much diag, which sucked. And then I went to another spot and got them to do the actual correction, uh, replace the actuators, new sensors and stuff like that for about 616 bucks uh, for labor and all the parts. Yeah, we're talking basically about $2,000 later. This intake right here, which I think was like 350 or whatever, I put the price up, plus the Ford Diag, and then this extra repair here, it was probably about two grand. I think it was like two grand, $11 or something. I'll put the total up. Yeah, not fun. I'll go in here and show you all the new stuff that we got. You can see we still have the doorman intake manifold. We also have brand new actuators back there. So that's probably what I needed to do when I replaced this. So, but as you can see, it's back up and running. No problems, no surging. Let's get in here real quick and I'll show you. It's, it's all good now. Yep, no more weird surging or anything. Yes, everything is working. No, no weird noises anymore. All pretty good see rpms are fine everything's all good so no more check engine whatever but hey if you're still trying to do this correction here i won't tell you exactly what to do because i technically didn't really finish it but i can show you how to take this intake manifold off and replace it but if you have this same code and i'll put the codes up here so you can see which ones that might pop up but if you get one of these codes where your runners are stuck open, it's stuck closed, whatever. In this case, the little piece that stuck off into the actual actuator broke off. So that's why it was all jacked up. I'm talking this one right here. You can see this one right there, but yeah, that was the one that broke off right there. Yeah, if you do this yourself, I guess the best advice I can give is to get a new intake manifold, get new actuators and sensors or whatever, 
and replace them all at one time if they all go bad. It might could have just been a coincidental situation where they both went bad at the same time, but forms I've seen say that they do both go bad simultaneously, whether it be the actuators mess up or the intake manifold itself. You gotta do both regardless or at least one, but instead of spending two grand, having to get a Diag from Ford themselves and just get stripped of all your money, take it from me. <laughs> and just do both if you decide to do this yourself. If not, say, hey, I got this problem, I need new actuators and I need a new intake manifold and go to some other shop that you can trust. Find some Ford certified shop or whatever to do it and hopefully they won't charge you too much money. If I would have taken it to the guys I did the first time, we're talking maybe 900 bucks all around. You know what I mean? I could have probably brought the intake myself and said, hey, replace this right here. Walked out the door for less than a thousand dollars. So. Save you some money, take it from me. I had to go through this nonsense, but it's all good. I did get to drive Sierra a lot last week and I loved it since I got my long two headers and stuff, so. So that was pretty fun. But like I said, if this is your problem, that's how to replace the intake manifold just itself. But uh, other than that, that's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you for watching. You know, we'll definitely keep learning from this nonsense and using our hands to try to save some money, but there you go. As always guys, you can like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. It is your choice. God loves you and so do I. We'll see you next time. Peace out.